I want to play the Stefana clip. We have to start to dismantle <laughs> these efforts at silencing people uh, brick by brick. And the latest moral panic is surrounding college campuses and the pro-Palestine demonstrations that have occurred on college campuses. Um, in part because, as Bender was talking about uh, earlier in, in reference to TikTok, um, the, the reason that there's more pro-Palestinian sentiment on TikTok is because younger people use TikTok and uh, younger people are more pro-Palestinian. And so that's why you're seeing these demonstrations on college campuses. And, you know, have there been instances of anti-Semitism in some of these demonstrations? I don't doubt that. I, I don't doubt it. Absolutely. And um, I, I believe it quite. I believe that there uh, that, that that is quite uh that is very likely i mean you know I even in demonstrations outside of college campuses uh pro-palestinian demonstrations have there been instances of anti-semitism certainly obviously um you know i don't like the idea that in in philadelphia um the the, the they were going after that restaurant well owner, right? sorry but that restaurant fired there's some labor stuff going on with that I restaurant, know. and i know the optics but i also think like we can understand something a little bit deeper than that i like I i'm think just that, trying to be right. generous here yes, and say enough. and say that like you know we we shouldn't be inherently dismissive of that yeah although re uh, also i will say uh, if you're a business owner and you fire somebody for showing solidarity with palestine i think you should be protested yes um with all that said though the the construction here by elise stefanik and this clip that is going around um is is in bad faith um she asked here the presidents of, of MIT, Penn, and Harvard um, whether calling for the genocide of Jewish people would constitute harassment. And, um, you know, of, I would think Obviously. it should, right? Of course. But the, the presidents of these schools here kind of equivocate and um, they say that it depends on the context, whether it rises to harassment. And the context, though, of, of their equivocation is that Representatives like Stefanik are trying to say that the usage of the term from the river to the sea is a call for genocide, among other things. And so she, sorry, intifada. and and the term intifada. Um, and th that is what Stefanik is referring to as calls for genocide. And if that is what, if that is the definition, then the equivocation by the presidents is are, is certainly justified, I mean, in my opinion. And can I just decode, like intifada, first intifada, um, the, I mean, the, the imagery was rocks thrown at tanks. Yeah. Second intifada was more uh, suicide bombings, which uh, is a tactic I ab absolutely condemn. I think that's hor horrifying, and I don't think it's been productive uh, to go down that route either. Um, but that said, like, I, intifada obviously has multiple meanings, and I think the broad, or the, I mean, just the dictionary one uh, is uprising and yes. that sort of thing. So again, this is like this is like the same way uh, we. I mean, my entire adult life, we freaked out at the word jihad, regardless of uh, context that that was put in. It's yes. just because it's a scary Arab word, right? Um, and so that's the, 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 that all of that prelude is to to uh, just give you the the proper understanding of where Stefanik is coming from. Dr. Kornbluth, yes. does M at MIT, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate MIT's code of conduct or rules regarding bullying and harassment, yes or no? If targeted at individuals not making public statements. Yes or no? Calling for the genocide of Jews does have, not constitute bullying and harassment? I have not heard calling for the genocide for Jews on our campus. But you've heard chants for intifada. I've heard chants, which can be anti-Semitic depending on the context, when calling for the elimination of the Jewish people. So those would not be according to the MIT's code of conduct or rules? That would be um, investigated of, as, as harassment, if pervasive and severe. Ms. McGill, at Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment, yes. I am asking, specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute That's bullying not. or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. 
It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to answer yes, Ms. McGill. So is your if testimony it, that it, you will not answer yes? If it uh, is, if the, yes or becomes, no. if the speech becomes conduct, it can be harassment, yes. Conduct meaning committing the act of genocide? The speech is not harassment? This is unacceptable, Ms. McGill. I'm gonna give you one more opportunity oh for the God. world to see your answer. Does calling for the genocide so of Fox Jews friends, violate Penn's code of conduct when it comes to bullying and harassment? Yes or no? It can be harassment. The answer is yes. And Dr. Gay, at Harvard, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment? Yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. What's the context? Targeted as an individual, targeted as, at an individual. It's targeted at Jewish students, Jewish individuals. Do you understand your testimony is dehumanizing them? Do you well, understand you that, that dehumanizing Yeah, so, so, so this is going viral among, you know, like pro-Israel circles. Morons. And I just want to say, you know, they, they try to get out of the... They could have been clearer in saying, can you point to an instance Yeah, they, they failed and they should be embarrassed as leaders. All they need to say is, actually, I don't think Intifada is uh, act, a call for genocide, you moron. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, as you guys are saying... And it's not what are you sorry, Bradley, to? just one second. Yeah, no. It's not directed at the... The, the idea that... Protesters on campuses are directing at, at just fellow Jewish people on as being Jews and not at the state of Israel to stop what it is doing is hysterical lies. And Stefanik knows she's like, I don't I forget her background, but like that is she's not the CIA one, right? That's no, no, else. that's um, Slotkin. Right, right. But anyway, like th this is just this is y you are an idiot if you. And, and uh, honestly, we need better <laughs> Ivy League not sending their best because that is it, it should be simple to say, actually, that's not how to decode that. If they were saying specifically, uh, yeah, we should genocide Jewish people. Yeah, those people would be suspended. Of course. And it, the, the, the line of questioning is the is what you hear, you know, in terms of the logical uh, fallacy of the question, like, uh, when will you stop beating your wife? Right. Or uh, have you stopped beating your wife? That is essentially how her line of questioning is constructed, which is that um, there is a mass problem of on college campuses of the calling for genocide of Jews, which is just not the case. And um, it's interesting that the the uh, the Harvard representative there was not asked. And of course, she isn't about the well-funded right-wing efforts on the Harvard campus to dox, which uh, uh, you can look up the all of the students that signed the pro-Palestine letter in the wake of October 7th, um, including trucks in Harvard Square. Screens. Screens. screens reading their names. With their names yeah. and LED lights calling them an anti-Semite. But I would just also say, like, as you guys are pointed to, like, they one of them could have actually just been like, what exact... Are you alluding to, a, to specific instances on our campuses where that is literally being, I mean, even if it comes across as pedantry, it would be good to know what actual instances Elise Stefanik is pointing to yes. where she believes that MIT, Harvard, or UPenn students are explicitly calling for the genocide of Jews. And also, to be honest, like this is also, it's, in, it's crazy how this has been laundered already so quickly. From Elise Stefanik, the number four Republican in the House, she's one of the most disingenuous uh, members. She's basically Nancy Mace from, the, from upstate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like she is no like she like she's a constant foil for Democrats. And yet now Andrew Bates, a spokesperson for Joe Biden, is is, is responding to this saying, obviously, it shouldn't be difficult to condemn uh, the calls for genocide. And Josh Shapiro, who's a non-voting member on the board of the University of Pennsylvania, kind of wants Meg uh, McGill uh, to resign. Yeah, this stuff is already it's already it's already it's a it's a piece of paper flowing in the wind. That's uh, that's just continuing to gain gain track, gain speed and gravity. At this Shapiro, point. the governor of, yep, of Pennsylvania, yeah, governor. is a non-voting member member of the board interesting yep. okay mm. at, the, um, at the end of the day though like this is just like a, a like a ludicrous that like fine if, if people involved in the college wanted to deal with this fine but it's ludicrous that this is a national news story while what's going on in gaza is happening like we are arguing over whether they're arguing over whether they're not even arguing over whether the intifada the word intifada means genocide of jews they're just outright yeah. 
agreeing that's the fact while there is mass killing going on in gaza right now over yeah. what is it we're at 20 000 deaths or, or, or approaching that number it, it, Seventeen thousand exactly. officially but though that's m- more likely the numbers it, and it's been the, the two, two months the, the two the two the two the two palestinian uh, intifadas they were over a course each five years that's 10 years total i'm yeah. looking at numbers right now that say that over right. those 10 years around 1,000 people on the israeli side died uh that right. includes exactly. that includes soldiers too um on the other side obviously the palestine way more palestinians died during the Intif- both intifadas because ob- palestinians always get the worst of the because yeah, israel's not going to stop until that's the case yeah right, i mean right so just if, children so, so, matt so, just children so they, is seven times that already in eight weeks so we are we are right now arguing over whether not even arguing we are admitting that the two intifadas mean genocide of all Jews, but we're also simultaneously, I'm talking about the people who are involved here, because they all agree here that what Israel's doing is not genocide, or at least not yet. 17,000 plus deaths, but this isn't genocide, but we're arguing over intifada. Yeah. It's no. ludicrous, and it's meant to keep us yes. from stopping to talk about what's going on right now. It's Every cynical. single thing. Again, if you're involved in the college, if you're in that world, this is obviously a conversation for you. The fact that this is a major national news story, though, is ludicrous. I mean, exactly. And even if you want to confine it to fucking college, uh, how about the universities in Gaza that are being bombed? How many of those, like, is it, are we 11 now? Um, at least 11 buildings. Um, or uh, how about domestically? Three Palest- supporters of, I don't know if they're Palestinian, but supporters of Palestine wearing kafiyas shot in Vermont. Yeah. One, one of them paralyzed for life. Yep. And yet we're, we're having this song and dance because uh, basically Zionists are, are acting scared about language. I, and it, it, I mean, it's appalling and i think that you know they can the, every ounce that they give you an outrage you return right back because i absolutely what israel and zionists zionists the effect that they have had on our politics is exactly what binner's talking about it's to act, throw sand in people's eyes as thousands of people are being bombed um and make us feel like we're the bad ones no I mean, yeah. no, I, and, and, you know, and I've seen I've seen I saw this great video of, of a guy at a protest and he's being interviewed <laughs> by like BBC or something. And he's asked, um, you know, they ask him about why he's at the palace that this pro Palestine rally. And the, the interviewer says, um, but what about October 7th? And then he responds in a really a great way. I don't know if this is this was from this guy originally or if he's, he's seen other people do this. But then he replies, OK, but what about October 8th? October 9th, October 10th, yeah, yeah. October. And he went down the whole line to, into November. Cause I guess that was when it was. And I that's mean, all, that's, yeah. that should be the reply to all of this, to all yeah. of this. You are distorting and trying to take away what's going on and trying to uh, deflect, <clears throat> I should say, from what's going on right now. Yeah. I, I wish, I wish we could focus on the innocent civilian hostages that were taken by Hamas and freeing them. Israel is making that impossible. Or I wish that we could focus on the concerns of students of like hate crimes domestically in the United States, whether it when it comes to anti-Semitism and the and the increase of anti-Semitism. If that were the most pressing issue, if there weren't hundreds of Palestinians being murdered brutally, maimed beyond recognition, um, maggots infesting their wounds, children crying that will never see their parents ever again. If that wasn't happening on a daily basis, like I really have nothing but contempt for the people that privilege their own like experience in these cozy Western established uh, institutions like Harvard or, or MIT honestly. and try to pervert them and destroy freedom for other people for it so they can feel safe from a fucking postcard right also not um, to minimize yeah, I'm sorry ahead. not to minimize what's going on in uh, Israel and Palestine but I would this is also people like Republicans taking shots at organizing on the left you know yeah, this is exactly. another way for them to try to broadly weaken leftist organizing because we are in a time that of you know record setting like labor like labor victories the palestinian the pro palestinian protests have been gigantic and constant since october 7th and if you know we don't if they don't trouble that if they don't like make that taboo there is I, i'm sure a fear that it will spill over into other issue areas especially if the government becomes it were just the government is so obstinate on ensuring at the very least a ceasefire yeah, right. Um, I do want to pull out um, 
not somebody I normally like to tout his writing, uh, Jonathan Chait, uh, who is a guy who has, I think, fanned the flames of the let's be paranoid about what's going on on college campuses with regards to like free speech. But nonetheless, he's consistent here, at least. Um, Stefanik was defining it even more aggressively, though, by using shorthand calling for the genocide of Jews. As 39 as it may be, globalizing the intifada does not mean genocide. I appreciate Chait making that point. Yeah. Even worse, Stefanik was trying to collapse the distinction between speech and conduct when she said incredulously conduct meaning committing the act of genocide no conduct does not have to mean committing genocide it can mean vandalism shoving invading people's personal space or violating content neutral rules regulating time place and a manner of demonstrations now that last one i'm less interested in um what stefanik was demanding was the wholesale ban on rhetoric or ideas that jews find threatening regardless of context a university should protect students from being mobbed or having their classes occupied and disrupted disrupted but should not should it, but it should should it not but, oh, should but should it, it not protect them from an op-ed in a student newspaper calling to globalize the intifada or a demonstration in an open space demanding from the river to the sea? That would entail a wholesale violation of free speech, which in addition to more, the moral problem it would create would likely backfire by making pro-Palestinian activism a kind of forbidden rebellion then as many students currently find an irritant. I mean, that's Chait. I, I will remind folks that uh, Jonathan Chait, when he was uh, a college student at the University of Michigan, was saying, why, are, why is all my... Uh, uh, you know, college, uh, you know, associates, why are they so obsessed with the South Africa stuff? Mm -hmm. So he's, he's a stick in the mud liberal, uh, you know, loser, right. uh, but right. at least he's defending, uh, you know, coming to his senses about here where so many people aren't. Well said, well said. Um, Rob from Denim says tone policing people on what an isn't genocide isn't intentional distraction from actual genocide ongoing it reminds me of 2020 when the protests had people saying defund the police and people lost their minds saying that people want the destruction of policing instead yeah. of what most people want reimagination and restructuring of what policing looks like <coughs> people keep saying that essentially that essentially and criticism of israel is quote calling for the destruction of israel do we want it destroyed no but it definitely needs reformation the past 75 years have shown that and i get the focus now is on gaza but the violent Violence and lack of Palestinian rights in the West Bank cannot be ignored because uh, once Israel is done devastating Gaza, they are going to set their sights on the West Bank. Well said, Rob. Um, Jingle Smells production assistant says Stefanik will have a tough re-election. Her district comes so far south that it includes par parts of Troy in the capital region. This is her re-election bid. Uh, and with the state of New York's Democratic Party, it will probably work. I will also say, yeah, that, that I'd imagine that... Um, this public display will be very good for her campaign um, in terms of like the amount of money that she'll raise from pro-Israel groups.